Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon Job 1, 6-22 Verse 6 Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Angels and all kinds of intelligent spirits had, as it were, a special, solemn, general assembly, a great field day, or levy. Perhaps, in stars far remote, in various parts of the universe, there was celebrated, that day, a high festival of honor unto Jehovah, but since sin has come into the world, since even among the twelve apostles there was a Judas, so in every assembly, even though it is an assembly of the sons of God, there is sure to be a devil, Satan came also among them. If he is not anywhere else, he is sure to be where the sons of God are gathered together. Yet what impudence this is on his part, that he dares to come even into the assemblies of the saints. And what hardness of heart he must have, for he comes in as a devil and he goes out as a devil. The sons of God offer their spiritual prayers inspired by the Holy Spirit but the devil offers diabolical petitions suggested by his own malice. 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, From where do you come? He is obliged to give an account of himself. He cannot go a yard from his door without divine permission. 7. Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Satan is always busy, never quiet, he cannot be still. 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? You see, Job is a man whom God calls his servant even in speaking to the devil, Have you considered my servant Job? 8. That there is none like he in the earth a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God, and shuns evil? God himself gives Job that high character. He is a non-such, he stands alone among mankind, there is none like he in the earth. Have you reckoned him up? Have you taken his measure, O you accuser of the brethren? 9. Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Even the devil could not bring a charge against Job's conduct, so he insinuated that his motives were not pure. 10. Have not you made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he has on every side? He finds that it pays, it answers his purpose to be devout. 10 to 11. You have blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth your hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse you to your face. See, the devil measures Job's corn in his own bushel, but, happily, it was the measurement of a liar, so he measured amiss. There are still some who say, Yes, it is a fine thing to be good when you are rich. It is a very easy thing to behave yourself all right when all goes smoothly with you. Would the man who is such a devout servant of God, now, be like that if he were in poverty, or if he were cruelly slandered, or if he were tested with contempt? Would the grace of God carry him over those rough bridges? His religion is a fine thing, no doubt, but if he were tried and tested, we would see what he would do. Now, the Lord delights in proving the graces of his people, for it brings great glory to his name when experiments are made upon them to test them and try them, and to let even their greatest adversary know how true they are and what a divine work it is which God has worked upon them. 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power, only upon himself put not forth your hand. Satan could go so far, but no farther. 
there is an, only, in the permission granted to him, only upon himself put not forth your hand. 12, 13. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Now there was a day when Job's sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. That was a bad day for trouble to come. Satan selected that day because it was a joyful day and, therefore, it would make the trials of Job the more startling. Moreover, if Job could have had his choice, he would have preferred that his trouble should come when his sons and his daughters were praying, not when they were feasting. 14, 15 And there came a messenger unto Job, and said, The oxen were ploughing, and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabines fell upon them, and took them away, yes, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and only I am escaped alone to tell you. The bad news comes to him all of a sudden, just when he is thinking of something very different. There is only one servant left to tell the tale, he was spared that Job might know that the news was true. If that one other servant had been killed, the tidings could only have reached Job as a rumor that might or might not be true, but now, one of his own servants tells him the sad story, so there is no mistake about it. Ah, the devil knows how and where to strike when he strikes. Yet this was only the first blow for poor Job, and there were heavier ones to follow. 16. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and has burned up the sheep, and the servants, and consumed them, and only I escaped alone to tell you. Now, if that lightning had fallen on the Sabines while they were robbing and plundering, one might not have wondered. But to fall on the flocks of a man of God who had clothed the naked with the fleece of his sheep and had presented many of the fat of the flock unto God in sacrifice, that did seem strange. This trial, too, comes right upon the back of the other, and this one appeared to be more severe than the former one because it seemed to come distinctly from God. The fire of God, the lightning, is fallen from heaven and has burned up the sheep. 17. While he was yet speaking there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yes, and slain the servants with the edge of the word, and I only am escaped alone to tell you. Three such heavy blows will surely be enough to test the patriarch, but a fourth messenger came with the direst news of all. 18-19 While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and, behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead and I only am escaped alone to tell you. Did any other man ever have to endure such a complication of trouble, such agonies piled, one upon another, with no respite? Job must have felt well near stunned and choked by these consecutive griefs. 20-22 Then Job arose, tore his clothes, and shaved his head and fell to the ground, and worshipped, and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Oh, the triumphs of almighty grace! May God grant us such patience, if he sends us such trials, and unto him shall be the glory evermore.